All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you this evening um, and join us for our information session on the Brown Environmental Leadership Lab, or BELL. Um, we will most likely refer to it as BELL throughout the rest of the evening, as that is a mouthful. Um, we are excited to have you joining us this evening or morning or whatever time it is, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, my name is Dan Murphy. I am the Digital Communications Specialist, and I will be kind of... Uh, moderating tonight's information session. So before we begin, I just have a, a, a quick agenda and a few housekeeping items for you. Um, we're gonna start off by just providing a very brief overview of Brown Pre-College as a whole. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how to apply and things to consider when you're applying. I will then introduce our guests to discuss um, the Bell program. And then we'll end with uh, Q and A. Um, so you'll be able to submit questions throughout the presentation. Um, we also have a few pre-submitted questions from those of you who registered for tonight. The session should take about 30 minutes or so, um, and it will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube page within the next week. So if there's anything that you miss or you want to share this or rewatch it for whatever reason, um, and within the next week, it should be uploaded to our YouTube. Um, and then lastly, closed captioning is available. So if you um, are needing closed captioning throughout this presentation, if you click on the little button at the bottom of your screen, it should say CC. Um, that will provide some closed captioning for tonight's presentation. Whoops. Um, some brief housekeeping things. So as you are, as we are presenting and chatting, as questions come to you, please submit them using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, we will try to answer as many questions as we possibly can at the end of this presentation, but you can submit these at any point. Um, we also like to remind people that all the information we're going over tonight is available on our website at precollege.brown.edu. Edu. So if there's anything that you want to learn more about or you miss something, um, it is most likely on our website. So let's just dive right in. Um, so each year, Brown Prairie College, we welcome more than 6,000 high school students who choose to spend part of their summer with us. Um, and while they're here, they're exploring over 300 courses that reflect the open curriculum here at Brown. Um, I think last time I checked earlier this week, we had about 340 courses um, uploaded so far. Um, so you're definitely bound to find something that you're interested in. Um, our program replicates the freedom and responsibility of the real college experience. So while you're here, you'll balance the challenge of, of college level academics with enriching social activities that are available when, um, wherever you choose to study, including Bell programs. Um, tonight though, we are going to discuss specifically our Bell programs, um, and I will get to that in just a minute. Come on. Um, regardless of which program you're interested in, your first step uh, in your pre-college experience here at Brown is completing our application. Um, our application is designed to mirror the common application, which is used by many colleges and universities across the country. Um, and our application process will help prepare you for that college application process, um, including adding your transcripts, grades, um, and thinking through and crafting an essay based on a unique writing prompt. Um, our 2022 application or 2023 application is now open. It's now live, um, opened a week ago. Our regular admission deadline is May 12th. Um, and as you hear shortly, if you're highly interested in any of our programs, such as a Bell program, um, we encourage you to apply sooner rather than later. Um, you can find our application and the application checklist by clicking on apply at the top of our website. Um, and there you'll find everything that you'll need to complete your application before you start it, such as the essay prompts, grade requirements, transcripts, anything else that you would need. Um, and then lastly, we like to remind people when you're applying, um, you're applying to the Brown Pre-College program as a whole. Um, once you are admitted to the Brown Pre-College program, you can then, you then need to go in and enroll in a course if it's available. Um, so when you apply, you do list, you know, what programs you're interested in, but once you are admitted, you actively have to go and select those programs if they're still available. Um, and just uh, as a reminder, you do have to meet the age and grade eligibility requirements for the program you're interested in. Um, and those are all listed on our website under the programs page. So enough about me and uh, Brown Pre-College in general. Um, 
to speak to us tonight um, about our Bell programs, I am super pleased to introduce the Associate Director of Pre-College Programs and Environmental Studies, Dr. Jane Diener. Hi, Jane. Hi. How are you this evening? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. <laughs> so excited um, to talk about Bell. Yeah. Um, I know we have quite a few people here tonight. I know that Bell is a very popular program, so um, let's just dive right in. Um, Jane, let's start off with what is the Bell program and how has it changed and grown over the 20 years that it's been offered? Yeah, so the Brown Environmental Leadership Lab, which Dan did a great job saying at the beginning, uh, but in case you joined later, the Brown Environmental Leadership Lab is named Bell, affectionately, mostly because it's too long to say the whole title all the time. Um, so Bell started in 2002 with Bell, Rhode Island, which is actually pictured here. Uh, it's evolved over the years. It's always had the same foundational miss it, mission from the very beginning to combine concepts in environmental studies, ecology, and leadership with a mission, mission of developing socially responsible leaders. Um, so the Bell courses vary immensely from location to location, but they share a lot of similarities. So for example, the daily schedule looks really similar across all the programs. And there's also unique programmatic elements specific to Bell, such as solo time and the site visits that we take. So the environmental component of Bell is obviously very important. Um, it's at the center of most lessons taught by our instructors and guest speakers. And students at the Bell programs also do a lot of their learning or a good portion of their learning outside to build that strong connection to the environment. So the two L's are really the part of the Bell program that don't get enough attention. So I really wanna highlight them tonight. The two L's are huge. The first is leadership, which actually connects Bell with another one of the programs in pre-college called the Leadership Institute. Um, and for both programs, they highlight leadership principles and skills. So students learn about specifically environmental leadership at Bell, what it takes to be a change maker in the challenging political and ecological climate we're in today. The second L is for lab, which for many of you, you probably associate it with imagery of scientists standing over microscopes and white coats. And that is in fact, one way to think about a laboratory, a physical space where scientists meet uh, or researchers do their work. Uh, in the context of Bell, I hope that you'll think about it more in terms of like-minded students coming together to learn together and also from each other and live in a community. And it's really important to remember when thinking about what the day-to-day -day Bell experience is going to be like that students are working and learning together as a cohort. So that kind of covers the whole Brown Environmental Leadership Lab. That's awesome. Great. Thank you. So can you talk a little bit more about what Bell programs will be offered this year? Definitely. So we're excited to offer our Bell Rhode Island and Bell Alaska programs again. We've been running those for quite a while, obviously Bell Rhode Island since 2002. And we're also offering a brand new program called Bell Eastern Sierras. So to break down the programs a little bit at Bell Rhode Island, students will be learning about practices for effective science communication, socially responsible leadership, and all of the history of the environmental justice movement, including how power and privilege manifest in environmental decision-making. And this is a photo from one of our site visits at the, at the Bell program in Rhode Island. At Bell Eastern Sierras, students will visit and study some incredible ecosystem, including the Tufa Towers at Mono Lake, the ancient bristlecone pine trees and the ancient bristlecone pine forest, that's a mouthful, um, as well as Convict Lake, uh, which is actually right next to the lodging site, and you can hike there from our lodging site. Uh, so there, students will grow to better understand the causes and impacts of climate change and identify examples of environmental resilience. And finally, at Bell, Alaska, students will learn all about the Alaskan experience, both from a native perspective and an ecological perspective. So topics will include uh, understanding of land and land ownership, native history, subsistence living, and much more. Um, and likewise, this is another photo from one of our great site visits. Um, I did, I think it's probably important at this point to mention that there's been extraordinary interest in Bell, Alaska, um, as well as a lot of our other programs, but specifically Bell, Alaska. Um, at this point, I just wanted to note that accepted students who want to enroll will likely be waitlisted for the Bell, Alaska program. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's a very popular program. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about, you know, who's teaching the students in the Bell programs? Like who's coming with them and actively teaching them in the field and in the classroom? Yeah, of course. Um, so our staff is composed of environmental educators from all over the country. And each year, the, the pairings of environmental educators are a little bit different. So this year, we have three different teams of instructors. For Bell, Rhode Island, we have this great pair of returning instructors who've been working with Bell, Rhode Island since 2018. Uh, they're really excited to share their expertise in science communication and environmental leadership and environmental justice. Uh, for Bell, Alaska, we have two instructors who are bringing two completely different perspectives. One instructor has lived in Alaska for her entire career, and she's bringing with her a lot of the local perspective and local connections. And then we, they'll also be joined by a Brown PhD student whose course content provides a critical introduction to environmental studies, as well as indigenous histories. So there's some overlap between uh, each of the sets of instructors, as you can see. And then Bell Eastern Sierras is going to be taught by a Brown University faculty member from the Institute at Brown for Environment and Society, as well as his graduate students. Uh, and they're really excited to start a new program, too. All of the programs will also have residential staff that are responsible for the student life components of the program, making sure students are comfortable, fed, all of the really important parts of the day outside of the academic experience. And that will include an on-site director for each of the programs. And that's going to be the main point of contact for all of the families and the students at the program. Great, thanks. Um, so you mentioned a little bit earlier about like site visits and we had some mm -hmm. photo site visits. So can you talk a little bit of like what kind of organizations do we partner with for our Bell programs um, about site visits, uh, partner organizations, things like that? Yeah, we partner with so many different individuals and organizations. So a lot of the organizations are local branches of large nonprofits. So the Nature Conservancy, Trout Unlimited, those are some that people might be familiar with. And we also visit local sites in each of, or local museums and local organizations in each of the sites. So this photo here is the perfect example. This is the Tomaquag Museum in Exeter, Rhode Island. And uh, these are the students participating in an art workshop that also teaches about indigenous history in Rhode Island. And this is one of the really wonderful site visits that we make while we're on in Rhode Island. And it's pretty similar uh, in terms of what we do there to the Alaska Native Heritage Center, which is pictured here, perfect timing, Dan. Um, and we try to just visit as many local organizations as possible to get those local perspectives. And as much as our instructors are wonderful at conveying environmental studies and even ecology, what's great about having these local perspectives is that these are folks who live and learn and work in these environments year round. And they're able to really bring in that historical context, whether it's about the eco ecological aspect of the site or about the historical aspects of the site. Great, thanks. Um, so could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on what does a, a typical day in the pro Bell program look like for a student? Yeah, of course. So the days are full. Uh, that's something that I really like to emphasize. Each program is a little bit different and has something uh, each in and each day is a little bit new, has something different scheduled. So you likely won't be repeating the same exact day throughout the Bell program. However, we do have a set schedule that includes the necessities, three meals a day. It also includes time uh, for some rest between lessons. And we also have this really great thing called solo time, which may sound potentially boring to some people. And it also may sound really restorative and amazing to others. And that's the point. It's to really give people the space that they need to just refresh and get back to the academic and social time. Some days have combinations of field trips and site visits, and some days are entirely at the lodging site uh, where the students will be doing learning with the instructors or amongst themselves. And uh, at the Bell Alaska and Bell Rhode Island trips, the students also participate in three night overnight retreats. So the overnight trips are a little more rustic than the main lodging, so it is exciting and fun. Um, and the students also get to work together to plan meals and live as a community. Whereas in Eastern Sierras, it's a little bit of a shorter program and the students will be doing that for the majority of the program anyway. Um, so during the entire program, this is something that's unique to Bell. We ask students to set their electronic devices down. 
And typically in a college setting, you're asked to bring your laptop with you and engage with your technology. And we really appreciate technology. However, summer after summer, I've seen this have such a positive impact on the community building and the ability for students to learn from each other. So most students highlight this as one of their favorite parts of Bell. And I know that sounds a little bit wild, but it's true. And then lastly, the one thing I wanted to make sure students and families know is that the field trip locations are subject to change due to weather availability, COVID restrictions. We've all been uh, you know, living in the post-pandemic world. So um, I know that there's a, a large sense of understanding about that. But if there's a cancellation, uh, we try to insert as close as possible uh, to the original site visitor field trip. And this actually, again, Dan, perfect timing with the slide. This field trip was a trip to the Matunic oyster farm that was a replacement for a trip to Block Island. Um, and you can see here, the students got to hold a lot of really interesting critters and they still got a boat trip. So the weather didn't really agree with us, but we still got the students out on a boat uh, learning about the local ecosystems. Great. Um, I know a common question we get about Bell is about accommodations and what those are like. And you mentioned a little bit earlier, but can you elaborate on what the accommodations would be like in each location? Yes, of course. So obviously they're, they're different from each other. Uh, however, all of the Bell programs, students stay in some sort of dorm or residence hall. So that's the one thing that is common across all of them. For Bell, Rhode Island, they stay at Brown University, uh, though they're in a space that's set aside just for Bell, Rhode Island students. And at Bell, Alaska, the students are at University of Alaska, Anchorage. And then for Bell Eastern Sierras, they're at SNARL, which is a, an acronym for the Sierra Nevada Aquatic Research Laboratory, which is pictured here. And the large building that you see in the forefront is actually a classroom, it's gorgeous. And then the building right beside it, just that second building over is the dorm space where the students will be living. And there are some other buildings that you see in the, in the picture that are used for research or laboratories. Um, and then for the overnight retreats, which happen at Bell, Alaska and Bell, Rhode Island, uh, the lodging is, as I said before, a little more rustic. The Bell, Alaska students stay in heated yurts equipped with bunk beds, and it's on a field station that actually has a lodge building with running water and a kitchen, but the students don't have access to showers, which honestly has not seemed to phase anyone in the past. Uh, Bell, Rhode Island students uh, will also, they'll be staying in tents during their retreat, and they'll have access to running water, some electricity, and they will even have a shower the luxury of a shower during their retreat. Wow, nice. That sounds fun. I would love to stay in a heated year. <laughs> <laughs> but not a tent. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I've been uh, camping. I would stay in a tent. Okay, great. Uh, so, <laughs> so thank you. That You provide a really good overview of the Bell program. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to transition to the Q&A. So again, if any of you have questions, um, now's the time to submit some. Um, we will try to get to as many as we can this evening. If for whatever reason we are unable to answer your question, we will provide our contact information at the very end. Um, but let's start off. We had a few pre-submitted questions, Jane. So let's start mm -hmm. off. Um, and this one was actually asked again this evening, um, but how many students are in each program? Yeah, I saw someone ask that earlier too. So in Rhode Island, it's 30 students per session and we have two sessions. In Alaska, it's 24 students total, which is, one of the many reasons why the program fills up so quickly, it's because it's a small cohort. And Eastern Sierras is 25 students. So I actually saw someone ask if there was a lot of interest in Eastern Sierras as well. And I would say, absolutely, Alaska is just a more longstanding program. So I think the year after year interest has brought a lot more people back. But all three programs seem to be really popular this year, which is wonderful. And I'm so excited about all the interest. Great. Thanks. Um, another one that we had submitted beforehand was what happens if the program fills and I'm waitlisted? Can I enroll in another Bell program? Yes. So first of all, a lot of the students who end up waitlisted on a Bell program find that once they read the descriptions for the other Bell programs that do have space, they get just as excited about that. So I would highly recommend checking out the other Bell programs in, um, I, I assume 
you might be waitlisted uh, for Alaska or Eastern Sierras, I definitely recommend looking into Bell, Rhode Island, which just has more space and therefore more availability. Um, but we also have a number of other offerings, which are really exciting. We have the Brown Experiential Education Programs in DC, Berlin, Segovia and Rome. So those are more worldwide. And on campus, we have a lot of options in the Leadership, Leadership Institute. And we also have Summer at Brown where students can find some really great environmental studies courses. And you can use the catalog to kind of narrow down your search really to a really fine point. And the environmental studies options are great this year. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Um, and I think you know, if you need help with that, you know, finding that program that's right for you with that course that's right for you. If for whatever reason the program you're interested in is waitlisted, if you call one of our program advisors as well, they're amazing. They're the they're so good. They're the encyclopedias of Brown Pre College. They will listen to your interests and they'll kind of be able to walk you through and help you, yeah. you know, try to find a program that's a good fit for you. Thanks, Jane. Um, when we got tonight, Anne was pre-submitted that I can take is how much does the program cost and do we offer scholarships? Um, so I don't have the costs up at the moment. However, if you head to our website, um, at the very top, you'll see cost and aid, and it'll give you a breakdown um, for each of the programs, um, for all the Bell programs, um, the exact cost there. Um, as for scholarships, you know, scholarships are available for domestic students. Um, those are also listed on that exact same page. We encourage people, if they're interested in them, to submit that application sooner rather than later, um, as we only have a certain amount of funds that can be handed out. Um, and we currently do not offer financial aid to international students. Um, Jane, this one was also um, pre-submitted. Can you accommodate food allergies or dietary restrictions in these locations? Yes, for the most part, we can accommodate dietary restrictions. Um, and this is something that I'll emphasize so many other times for admitted students. We absolutely need information from the forms. So this is one of the forms process, which we haven't talked a lot about, but will be very clear to you once you're admitted. Um, the forms process is super important at Bell because we order the food way in advance. So if you have a dietary restriction, we've so far not had anybody who we can't accommodate. So I hope that remains the case this year. Yeah. Um, another one for you, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, what are the qualifications required to come to Bell or be participate in Bell? Um, should the students have already conducted independent experiments or research studies prior to coming to Bell? Yeah, so I, I think the great thing about Bell uh, that connects all the program or all the courses across Bell is the action plan project, which is part of the, the leadership L. Um, all students develop, uh, go through a 10 step process to develop a, an action plan project that they can use to create positive change at home. So the answer is you don't have to do any pr preparation before coming to Bell. Obviously we, we are excited to have students who are excited about environmental studies and who want to create positive change. However, if this is your first foray into exploring how you can advocate and how you can be part of the environmental movement, this is a great place to start too. So some students come in with an entire exact organization that they wanna work with or a cause that they'd like to work in, in support of. Um, and some students learn about a lot of things at Bell and decide that they, um, and then decide on their action plan based on something they learn at Bell. So we accept people from all sorts of different backgrounds in terms of their preparation and their experience researching and conducting their own experiments. Great, thanks. Uh, um, this one just came in that I can take. When would we find out if we were accepted? Great question. Um, our admissions is rolling admissions. So once you submit your application, um, you typically will get a decision emailed to you um, within two to three weeks. Um, so there's no set date that you'd get a decision by, but it's typically within two to three weeks of you submitting your application. Um, once you get a decision, if you're accepted, you would then have to enroll for that program that you're interested in. So if you're interested in Bell, Rhode Island, for example, you would then go, and if Bell, Rhode Island still has um, availability, you'd be able to select it and then enroll. So uh, let's see. 
trying to go through. Um, Jane, this is probably more of a logistical question. Um, how do students get to the program? Do students travel together or meet at the program location? Yeah, that's a great question. So for Bell Alaska and Bell Eastern Sierras, students meet staff at the designated airport and they get that information with their accepted students page. And um, there's also a pre-departure orientation that students at Bell are required to attend. And if they don't attend, I end up having a meeting with them one-on-one -on -one to make sure that they understand all the information that we went over. So there's a lot of detail that goes into all of this, but we, we really emphasize that we don't want people to book anything until the program is confirmed. So we send out an official program confirmation after which they'll have all the information they need on when to book and exactly which airport and what time window they should book in. Great, thank you. Um, this one came in and I can try to answer it, but Jane, uh, <laughs> but in if, if you have more to say. So the question is, can you select multiple programs if you get in or only one? I can speak to this as pre-college as a whole. I don't know about Bell specifically, um, but I know with pre-college as a whole, in general, you can choose multiple programs as long as they do not overlap. So for example, you couldn't necessarily be enrolled in a Bell Alaska program and then an on and then a uh, an online course through Summer at Brown. Um, there are some caveats to that based off of specific programs. I believe STEM rising STEM for rising ninth and tenth graders has some specific requirements and all that. So if you are interested in more than one program. Um, and they overlap for whatever reason or anything like that, um, send us an email and our program advisors can kind of walk you through the specifics of what you're interested in. I don't know if you had anything else to add to that, Jane. Great. <laughs> um, so we have a few questions. Um, Jane, this one just came in. Do you get college credits for this program? You do not. Uh, some students like to add this to their resumes and CVs for when they are applying to colleges. Um, I have also had students who had a service requirement for their for an organization or a club that they are in at their high school and they use the Bell uh, Action Plan Project as a way to apply skills they've learned at Bell back to their community at home. So a lot of honors programs and, and programs like that will ask a student to do one project or uh, create some sort of end product before they graduate high school. So I think the action plan project is really a good fit for scenarios like that. Yeah. Um, the only program through Brown Pre-College that does provide college credit is the pre-baccalaureate program. Um, and if you're interested in learning that, we do have more information on the website as well. Um, Jane, what happens if the program is canceled? This is a great question. So first of all, students and families will be notified as soon as we know. Um, and we always recommend travel insurance. This is more of a general recommendation even beyond Bell. Um, but program cancellations are extremely rare, uh, though since we've been, you know, we've had a few years that we were heavily impacted by COVID. I think at this point, it's really important to note. So I'm really glad you asked that question. But again, students and families will be notified if that is the case. Right. Um, I can take this one. Will there be COVID protocols? Do we know COVID protocols? Um, given the last, you know, it's been three years of COVID now. <laughs> um, so fair question. Um, we do not know COVID protocols yet. We are still working on our just public health guidelines for the summer. Um, but it looks like that whatever the Brown campus has, um, as protocols, uh, the program would mirror that. Um, in some cases, you know, the state we're going to might have different protocols as well that we need to adhere by, but we will have finalized public health guidelines um, in the coming months um, for summer 2023. Um, what else? I can take this one as well. Um, and this might be the last question that we can take is how do I confirm um, how do I confirm my spot in the program if accepted? Great. So um, 
once you apply to Brown Prix College and are admitted, you would then enroll. So as long as you enroll in that program and it's still available and you meet all the requirements for it, um, you will be enrolled in it. Um, and then you would just need to pay the deposits um, for that program. And then you would be confirmed for that program. Um, and if you have questions also about like general age or grade eligibility, anything like that, that's also available on our programs page. So if you go to the bell pages, you should be able to say that, see that information. Um, great. Um, I see one question related to what we just said. How much time do you have to enroll? So once you get admitted, you can enroll for on-campus courses up to five weeks before that start date of that on-campus course and up to two weeks before an online course begins. General rule of thumb, enroll as, as quickly as possible. You'll have the biggest selection of courses and programs available to you as soon as you are um, accepted, so. Great, um, so I wanna be mindful of time. Um, so um, we wanna thank you for joining us tonight um, for Bell. Um, whoops. Um, we do have a few more information sessions coming up. If you are interested, they're all at Thursday at this exact same time. Next week, we'll be talking about the Leadership Institute, um, which as Jane mentioned, uh, Bell has some connections to the Leadership Institute. So if you're interested in Bell, you might be interested in the Leadership Institute as well. Um, we will then be having an info session on STEM uh, for rising ninth and 10th graders, language and context English, and then um, an overview of all of our STEM and CRE courses as well. So we hope you can enjoy, uh, join us for those. The link to register for these are on our homepage. Um, and if you missed any of our past info sessions, um, last week we talked about our Brown Experiential Education um, programs in Segovia, Rome, Berlin, and Washington, DC. Um, those are all going posted on our YouTube as well. So if you missed those info sessions, you can um, go watch those as well. And then we always like to encourage people, follow us on social media. We try to show more of a student perspective on our social media, especially Instagram, we're pretty active. So if you don't already follow us, please do. Um, and then if you have any additional questions that we were not able to get to this evening, um, send us an email at precollege at brown.edu or give us a call during business hours, which is Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we have an amazing team of program advisors. Again, they're the encyclopedias of the department. They can really help you navigate any question that you have, um, and they respond very quickly. Um, so definitely encourage you to send an email um, or call. So um, again, just want to say thank you. Um, it's been a joy getting to chat about Bell with you this evening, um, and we hope to see your application and um, see any additional questions that you have. So thank you.